Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to season two of Footprints. And I'm your host, Mr. Davis. I'm an educator here at BHS. And with me today is Ellie LaPointe. Hello, hello. Now, uh, I'm happy to have Ellie here. Uh, Ellie's sister was a senior last year, Ella D. LaPointe, and she ended up going to Hampton College, which is in Virginia. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today uh, about Ellie and her likes, dislikes, and some things that she's into. Uh, she's a senior, and I remember when she was a freshman. Yeah. And uh, so now here we are, you know, three years later, four years later, and uh, things have uh, have uh, changed yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the first thing I want to ask you, first, very first thing, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I am 17, turning 18 in a couple months, November 26th. Mm -hmm. Um about myself. I don't know. Yeah, so like what are your main interests? Like what 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 do you um, what do you like to do? I'm big on I'm big on art. Um I'm in right now. I'm in musical theater for crew for a uh, little woman. Mm -hmm. And I've done um musical production as well. Um I've been re I'm, I'm really big on arts. I think it's a, a family thing. So Okay. Yeah. All right. So when you say arts, big on arts, like you like painting, sculpting. Any, anything really. I feel like um with the way I've been raised as well as my sister, you know, music, um, art, drawing, uh anything anything you could consider it, yeah. You're into it, huh? In, okay. It. All right, I like that. So let's think about this for a second. Mm -hmm. I like art. But how about this? Tell us a fun fact about yourself that that most people don't know about you. Uh, fun fact. Um. Cut you off, goddamn. Yeah. Bit, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's all good. I'm an Irish twin. Oh, Elodie. no kidding. Because Elodie. That's interesting yeah. because, as you know, I have seven children. Yeah. Uh, I have four boys and three girls, and, and my son Cameron is 30, and my son Austin is 29, and people used to say they were Irish twins because they were so close together. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of yeah. interesting. I like that. <clears throat> Let's think about um, here at BHS, the academic life and the, and the school life. What's your, what's your favorite subject here in school? Uh, it's got to be history. History. I'd say history. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. Yeah. We like the history. Yeah. I love history. Okay, why is it your favorite subject? Why do you think it's it's interests you so much? Um, well, majority like academic life for me, I I can't with school. Like it's not my it's not my favorite. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. Okay. And one of the first like subjects I could really understand well from elementary to now is it's always been history. Because it's not it's it could be hard for other people, but for me it's very one, two, three, like, this is what happened. You learn about it. It's it's not hard to... Yeah, it's kind of connect yeah. the dots and kind of follow along. It's also along. really fun. I think it's very interesting. It is. Uh, yeah, history's cha about... changing. It's so funny when I say history. It's like I always say you got to know where you've been in order to know where you're going yeah. with history, right? Yeah. So sometimes it repeats itself. And, you know, that that's yeah. another story for itself. Um, <clears throat> so now, how do you balance, like, sort of work and other activities like maybe sports or or clubs or hobbies and stuff that you have how do you balance that with with school honestly it took me a long time to actually do that longer than you'd expect um <laughs> okay longer as in like recently it's been easier i used it used to be it used to be um very hard and mm -hmm. I would be slipping academically because of that because mm -hmm. I'm, it was it was always something else yeah but um, I always think now, like, do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do uh, and get it over with and just be done with it. Okay, and I like that's that. All, that's like all that. it is. That's a good mantra. I, li I like that. Okay, so what what's a memorable, a memorable project, something that you remember that you did or an assignment that you've done in school that was really, like, fun and, and just informative? Um... God, I don't. Let me see. Something very memorable. That I'm you sure did. there's one somewhere <laughs> in there. I'm sure there's one. Um, what are you thinking? Something that might really like, just really like. Oh, I remember I did this, and it was so great, and we had fun doing it. Uh, there's this one assignment. 
well, more like a little project that I did in um, English mm-hmm. my sophomore year, my sophomore year in English. And it was basically, we were reading um, Macbeth, um, and my teacher at the time, Ms. Schreyer, who is also my teacher now, three years in a row, <laughs> came up with an assignment like you would be a character on social media, like tweeting about um, the situation, the storyline, like mm-hmm. as them. And I did that with my friend um, Justin and my other friend Talia, and it was, it was so fun. We still talk about it like now. <laughs> it was so fun. It was really funny. Also, it was really fun to um, read the mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. story. The story was really good. And we watched the movie as well. So, so that's another way of looking at education, right? So when you get an educator like that, who really kind of pulls out the the fun stuff, right? The mm-hmm. best in you. You learn more yeah. by being more engaged with that type of the teaching. Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love Miss Shreya. She's, we, she's I great. I recently did um, a, like a baseball type of thing with her as well. It was it was a get to know you stuff because mm-hmm. school just started, mm-hmm. and what we had to do was write um, three facts about herself. One, something most people might know. The second one, some people may not know, and the third one, you really think no one would know. Right. And she would take them, she splits into two teams, and it was like, um, what is that game when you put it, it's like you put, uh, no, that's not that. It's like, um, <laughs> you have to guess who, what person's on the per- other person's side. It's, it's kind of like who charades, is it? it's called, who sort is it? of like, oh. Uh, is it called uh, who is it? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, 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 when yeah. You have to, that's basically what it was, but oh. it would be the other side, other team trying to guess the fact about somebody else. All right. Um. And she made it like a little baseball thing. So you get three wrong, you're out. It goes to the next team. Oh, okay. That was really fun. Yeah. I think that was the most fun I've had in a class in a while. Nice. And it was like last week. Again, it's it's the way that the material is presented as an educator. You know what I mean? I love to do the stuff like that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, just get the kids engaged. That's I think that's the best part of it. Now, how do you stay motivated Whew. Right, when you find a subject maybe kind of difficult? Um. Motivation is hard. I'm not going to lie. People like to make it seem very simple. Hmm. It's not. Uh, <laughs> well, let me think. Maybe, I don't know. Um, my hardest subject would be math. Right now I'm getting it really well, thanks mm-hmm. to Miss Mac. She teaches okay. a, it's in, a, in a great way for me. But I would say... Stay motivated. Oh. <laughs> Staying motivated is difficult. It is difficult. Believe me, it is. Because sometimes you just want to throw in that towel. Yes. Yeah. I think everybody does. Listen, Mr. Davis gets to that point, too. It's like, oh, my gosh, yeah. this again? Or, oh, I don't want to do it. I feel like if you think about a, a goal you have at the end of whatever it is, you'll stay motivated. Like, a reward or me. For me, it's graduating. I'm mm. ready to go. Yeah. I am ready to go. You ready to go? So... <laughs> When well, I'm gonna. Mr. Davis is gonna be sad to see you go. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I'm gonna miss you, but you're brightening up these halls. Believe I'll me, I'll be in. I'm ready to go. Yes, indeed. Um, I would say, yeah, the mo- the motivation is majority like goal based mm-hmm. in an environment at, like school. Mm-hmm. Having having a goal at the end of whatever it is that may be like hard for you is definitely right so you'd say that's probably one of your biggest challenges at school is is, is staying yeah, motivated staying motivated staying on and task doing that and staying on task yeah sure i understand that that's, that's that, listen that's tough for anybody not just you mm-hmm. everybody has those different like things that they, they really have to struggle with so mm-hmm. don't worry about it so uh, piggybacking on the off of that how have you sort of changed as a person Right. Have you changed? Like, have you grown during your high school years? What what have you seen that you, when you were a freshman to now you're a senior? How has that growth been and what, what's it been like? For I you? think it's been pretty drastic. My freshman year, I was um, not the model student. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I was always outside the class, always okay. in the hallway. Okay. Always in, um, I, would, I was so bored that I would get up and just try and do anything but. <laughs> school um uh-huh. but uh there was like a shift the big sh- it was it was a big shift after my sophomore year because i was like oh my god you're not gonna graduate on time like get it together and i was a bit my junior year was a bit worried like i was in a little slump like mm-hmm. the first half mm-hmm. and then i don't know i don't know where like second half of the school year i'm like literally just do it yeah. and i did and i got my credits all the way up 
and then I got moved up to senior year, and I'm just, I just do it. You're just happy, yeah. Yeah, I'm just with it. Yeah. I'm not making that mistake anymore. <laughs> do not do what I did. Go to so, class. So that would be my next question is, what advice would you give your freshman self? Get get your bun class and stay there. <laughs> stop walking around. Get your buns in class and yes. get there. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Well, you heard it first right here from Ellie. She said get your buns in class, so uh, that's a good thing to do. Let's think about um, some of your future goals and aspirations mm-hmm. and ambitions, right? Um, so, w- what are your plans after high school? What do you What do you have planned for yourself? Um, definitely going to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was thinking of going maybe in my to Miami, like FMAU or something. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to. I do have family in Florida, but I would rather be closer to my family here. Mm-hmm. Um, because of uh, Elodie's situation being so far, she's like she gets sick or something, and right. no one's really there. She has no. We have no family in Virginia that could just go like check on her for us. So and also it's expensive. She just left for college, and you're gonna send me off all the way for college. That's a little. It's, it's expensive. definitely expensive. Plus, yeah. uh, Massachusetts has really good like the most wanted schools to go to. So I there's mm-hmm. options here I could pick. Um, but definitely go to college. Uh, for what? Most likely pharmaceuticals. Okay. Maybe performing arts. Hopefully, because I love art, as you yeah, know. Yeah, for sure. You need you need creation to live. So. Okay. All right. I like that. So, like, at, piggybacking off of that. So now you're doing your pharmaceutical, or maybe you're doing your art thing. Mm-hmm. Where do you see yourself in ten years from now? So you're almost eighteen. So when you're almost thirty, Moon, you're like twenty-seven, twenty-eight years old. Where do you see yourself uh, doing? Um. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, you can define success in a couple of different ways, right? Right. Depending upon which direction you decide to go in. Um, so. um, probably rich and famous. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like if I'm sustainable in life, because I just want to be able to do what I want to do. Right. That's that's success for me. Okay. Or that's where I would like to be in ten years. Like, you have somewhere to be. You have a home. You have money, a flow, a really good income. Mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. travel. Um, I don't plan on having kids till I'm like 83. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> like 40 at least. So, yeah, like being able to be on my own uh, financially, um, personally, like that. I think that's like where I want to be. 10 yeah, years. for sure. Yeah. For sure. So, I mean, everybody has short term goals and long term goals. I mean, I didn't set out to have seven children but here i am with them things happen and it says that's correct and then so you kind of like throws you a curve and you kind of just go with it and roll with it but uh my dad gave me a bit of advice when i was younger and he said like people get up every day and they go to work and they hate what they do because they have to go do that Mm -hmm. he goes you have to get a career or something that you get to do so have to and get to are completely different things and you gotta go get to something that you love to do and I'm I'm happy to come here every day at BHS and and see your smiling face in the hallways it's always Brighton's Mr. <laughs> Davis's day um, let's talk some social issues a little bit here just a little bit um, what's one issue that you think is important for sort of young people to, to be aware of today um, like uh like racial, political, stuff okay, like that. Okay, anything like that. Yeah, sure. Whatever's on your mind. I don't know. Um, I feel like um, a lot of people in my generation are kind of a little bit ignorant with things. Mm. Uh, more like a watch what, you're, watch what you say kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. uh, words help hold power, and sometimes people just say... Say things they shouldn't, you know? <laughs> yes, I do know. Could really, could really, and say it out loud, probably. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. people don't want to hear hear that. So right. be more mindful with certain things they like you say. So that's the, the, the biggest thing I think that, that people don't do, mm-hmm. right? Is they're not mindful of the situation or they're not empathetic. They yeah. can't put themselves in, in somebody pers- else's place. It's not me, so why do I care right. type of situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that. I mean, to me... I think that's the biggest problem with the world today is, like, there's not enough empathy. There's not enough people to say, you know what, if that were me, I hope somebody would help me out if I'm in a situation where I need it. You know what I mean? And I I believe that if we continue to do that and hold on to the education and and teach our kids that as we're educating them in in the school Mm -hmm. systems here, I think it's going to be really important and it's going to be really awesome to release those students to the world yeah, because now they've got something that, you know, most yeah. kids don't have, you know, I think is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So what's your take on the importance of mental health? Oh, it's very important. Good? Very important. Um, personally, I think my, I've had my fair share of mental health um, troubles mm -hmm. since I was like seven. Okay. So All right. It's like a long-term thing. Um, people need be patient because majority of the times I was acting out is because of that. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, so um, it's very important, very no, important. For sure. So I feel like people should be a little more lenient with certain people. If the signs aren't that hard to see because um, who knows, might save their life. Yeah. You never know. No question, no question. So now do you think we're addressing it adequately enough here in school or should we do a little more? I don't think, not really. <laughs> no, I don't think we are, actually. We need to do a better job, is a what you're saying. A little bit more. Because okay. it's always the same, you know, bullying's bad, and um, go to your counselor if you need it. But mm -hmm. then you, it's sometimes you just never know when things happen or when people are feeling a certain way, and then it's like a bias is created or something. Now you think that this student's, like, one of your class because they're lazy and they don't like you when it could be, like, there might be someone in that class, you know, hounding them, or they might feel a little bit inadequate sitting in that classroom with all these people who are getting things so quick yeah. or they just might be feeling a certain way and right. it's just they don't, don't they can't deal with it right now yeah um for sure for sure speaking of experience <laughs> absolutely but yeah I, I think i think we should address it more and um, the the same signs that we've been explaining to people i feel like should make it open it a bit more because those aren't the only like things that could be causing the issues or whatever Okay. So, all right. I yeah. like that. I like that. You're right. A hundred percent. So now uh, you have extracurricular activities that you do outside yeah. of school. Mm -hmm. So wh what are those, some of those? Um, well, last year it was the people of color Alliance, but mm -hmm. I don't, I, we I don't have it this year because my sister had graduated. So right. it's kind of disbanded. We are trying to me, Josh and Yvonne, do want to bring it back though. So. Yeah. Before we leave, we wanted, this, we wanted to stick. Yeah, for sure. So um, just so you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, she's speaking about the Alliance of Students of Color, which myself, Mr. Davis, and Mr. Pittman are the uh, class advisors. We meet every other Thursday in Mr. Pittman's room 235. All right. You all should come. Yeah, that's it. You definitely Everyone's all should come. Everyone's welcome. Um, for sure. Also, I've been in, uh, like I said, theater. I recently started doing it again. I did my first show for Beverly last year, which mm -hmm. was Pippin. Great. Uh, beautiful show, amazing mm -hmm. cast, amazing mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. Miss my seniors. Um, but I've always been big on theater. It's it's, I'm, it's my it's my thing. It's my passion. I did it when I was like, I started doing it when I was like 11, I think. Mm -hmm. Or my first time doing it actually was in Centerville because they used to do fifth grade play every year. The fifth graders would put on a show, and I went to camp for it. Ended up leaving camp. <laughs> and haven't touched it since. And I'm like, you know what? I think that's a big reason, a big part of why I got um, my like my second half of my junior year together was because I had extracurricular, which was musical theater. And I really wanted to do it. And you you really couldn't do it, it without yeah. those grades being yeah, right. No doubt, so I got no it together doubt. and I was like, yeah. So basically the little carrot was waved in yeah, front. And I was, was like, hey, I got to get there. I got to do this so I can that do that. That was my goal. I yeah, needed that. For I really sure. wanted to do it. For sure. Listen, that's important. It's always important mm -hmm. to, to strive for something and have a goal and be able to do it and, and do stuff you enjoy, which is, right. which is really the most important thing. Um, so what kind of life lessons have you learned through these activities that you carry with you? Um, hmm. You're not alone in a lot of things. People, there's a lot of people that are just like you with, um, with the Alliance Students of Color. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot. When the first, the first couple weeks, I, I met a lot of people, made a lot of new friends. Mm -hmm. Um, the experiences we shared were really, really intimate, really deep. Right. And I'm like, whoa, I'm not the only one who's, okay, I'm not the only one. Great. And then for musical theater, there's a lot, not everyone's out to get you. <laughs> That's how we used to think. Everyone's That's out to true. Get me. Not Those, everyone is out to get you. Ev anyone who's in the... That's a fact. I don't care. Everyone, Anyone who's in the musical department or um, anyone in the musical department in BHS honestly are the nicest people mm. I've ever met. Mm. And I, I, I put that on everything. Oh, yeah. S the sweetest people ever. Make you feel really welcome. It was my first year. I knew some people. I didn't know a lot. Mm. Um, but I... I I became friends with a lot of them quick. They make you feel welcome. It yeah. looks like I've been there for years, yeah. honestly. So, yeah, not everyone's out to get you. And <laughs> a lot of people are just like you as well. Yeah, for sure. So. I mean, you can learn a lot of life lessons through that, right? Mm -hmm. Through the experience of, of, of the camaraderie of hanging out in theater with other people. Mm -hmm. 
maybe they have certain like things that are going on with them. They can share that with you and you can share with them and maybe you guys have something in common. But the, the most common thread is being in the arts, performing yeah. arts and having fun doing that. Right. So that's really where mm -hmm. it's at when you have that common thread. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, peer relationships and kind of school culture. So mm -hmm. um, how would you describe this culture of this school, BHS, here? And is it kind of supportive and competitive, or or is it something else? Um, I'd say it's supportive. Be, okay. Like we could come together when we really need to. Um, it's definitely competitive. Uh, eat dog, eat world. <laughs> so yes, indeed. It is. It is. Without a doubt. I feel like um, inside of the school, you have like different type of groups that stay with each other. Mm -hmm. um, really, those are really um, they're really tight knit. Uh, but when it comes to like outside, like let's say like a football game or something, it doesn't matter who you are, who you hang out with, you are repping your school. Yeah, no and doubt. And you're gonna rep it well. Yeah. Um, I think I think the the nature of the school is really really it has its good, it has its bads. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes people just like to annoy the crap out of you <laughs> just for the fun of it. Oh well, yeah, that yeah, happens. I think, Trust me, I have siblings and I, I have yeah. kids, so I know how that goes. I think it's just. I think yeah, I I would I would definitely send my children to the school. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. So. Now piggybacking on that, well, so um, what what role do friends sort of play in how you view this particular school, this high school, and your high school experience? What what are what kind of role do they play in? in your everyday life and how you come here to BHS and how you, you view everything? Um, you don't need a lot of them, one. Not everyone is your friend. But when you do find your friends, mm -hmm. keep them around, because that's like, that's support. They, they, they stay with you. I got, I think right now, out of out of the cesspool of friends I've had in <laughs> freshman year, that would, would peer pressure me to leave in class. Yeah. Um, the ones I have now, they want just want the best for me. So yeah, I think I think having fr the friends and um, the right friends, the right groups uh, in this school is very important. Uh, also, it, um, it it helps drives people to do what they have to do. Because hmm. if I have a, a class that I have no friends in, kind of stinks. Yeah, no doubt. And I feel awkward like they you have to pick a group and I'm I'm the only one without a group. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. I think they're very important. Um, also, making friends. No one's like actively out to get you right usually but nine times out of ten i feel like everyone's pretty welcoming so. oh for sure so now so what do you think uh schools can do to to better support students like what can we do to really help you know make your day a lot easier i mean i i feel like we we as professionals educators we get personal uh, professional days and we get a lot of like training on certain things mm -hmm. but but what do you as a student think that we can do a little bit better to really support students? Um, I feel like just, like they asked us on like forms for like get to know you. I would, oh, I always put being patient, mm. being a bit more patient, which is asking a lot because you guys are pretty patient with a lot of the kids. But <laughs> um, I feel like that taking your time, trying to understand, tr not trying to assume um, anything or make assumptions of like certain students. Mm -hmm. um, just be just being patient, not 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 too um, not demanding. I'm trying to find the right word for it. No, but I understand what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, like just like let it. Sometimes you just gotta let it marinate. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then come back to it. Because right? the anxiety is really them. it's it's intense. Oh yeah, it's so. a real thing for sure, for sure. So now let's talk about some fun and creative stuff. Yes. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Um. If you could create any class in this school or any club that doesn't exist right now at the school, what would it be and why? It's hard because we have a lot of clubs. We do. There's a video game club. There's photography club. Uh -huh. I think you all should take that mm -hmm. as a sign to join. <laughs> there's um, also the podcast club. Mr. Davis knows about right that. Here. Hey. Oh, let me see. Um, I, quite, I came up with one the other day. Let me think. Uh, what was it? Um... God, there's so many clubs in this school. Like, I'm trying to think of one that's not been taken already. Think of, think of something that you would want to do 
I want cats to be in the school. Cats. I'll have a cat club or something. Cat club. You need a de-stress. <laughs> There's going to be kittens. You go to a room, they have there kittens. kittens Maybe puppies. You could adopt them. How about that? Charity works, you know. <laughs> All right, I like something that. Something like that. So, all right, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, what's your dream vacation, and who would you take with you? Dream vacation? Yes. Japan. I've been. You've been to Japan? Wow. Um, but again... It would be Japan. It's beautiful. I bet it is. And who would I bring? Who would I bring? Who would you bring? Um, I would bring, I'm trying to think of, these are outside school friends, but I would probably okay. bring uh, my friend Juju and Liam. Actually, my whole friend group that's not actually in the school because they are a time. <laughs> I love those people a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. I like that. Can so, I bring more than one person? I'll bring more than one person. You can bring as many people yeah, as you want. There's no rules. Bring all of them. Okay. Bring them all. All right. So this one I like. This is a very good question. And I, I start thinking about this myself. If you could have lunch with any historical figure or any celebrity at all, who would it be? And what would you talk about? Malcolm X. Malcolm X? I love Malcolm X. Okay. All right. Great um, story. And what would you talk about? Um, how we come, he, how we, how we did what he did. I mean, like, it's just, I would, I would want to dissect that brain. Mm -hmm. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. Because that is a smart man. Yep. Um, and if there was another one, probably John Benet Ramsey, because I want to know what happened in that yeah, house. Yeah, you just want to know what happened, huh? That's my other one. I just want to know what happened in that house. Mine is Martin Luther King. Oh, I would, also I would like, like to sit down with MLK and mm -hmm. just talk to him and, and kind of just pick his brain a little bit about what his thought process mm -hmm. was behind being, like, nonviolent. Yeah. Why, is, why choose that? Why not fight fire with fire? I right. want to kind of know that. And I think I know why, but I want to hear him say it. Yeah. You know, you also, can how we did it. it for so long. Yeah. With everything that was happening at that time. Oh, yeah, for sure. How you didn't snap and just been like, you know what? <laughs> Forget it. You know what? I've had it. Yeah. <laughs> so check this out. Uh, I'm going to do a little quick quiz for you here. Oh, okay. So this is a quick one. So is this the NBA or is this the NFL? 36 accused of spousal abuse. Is that the NBA or the NFL? Say it again. So is um so is it the NBA uh -huh. or the NFL? You know, the NBA yeah. and the NFL. There's Basketball, two different football. leagues. Right? Yeah. So I'm going to give you some figures in, of things that have happened. Okay. Uh, 36 accused of spousal abuse. You think it's the NBA or the NFL? NBA? All right, we'll go with that. Is it not? Seven, seven been arrested for fraud. NFL. NFL. Okay, 19 accused of writing bad checks. NFL? Uh, maybe. 117 <laughs> have been bankrupted. Bis NBA? They've been bankrupted businesses. NBA? NBA, we'll go with that. Three have done time for assault. NBA. NBA. Can't get credit card due to their credit. NBA. Hmm. Maybe. Arrested on drug charges. NBA or NFL? Both. Okay. I can say both, right? Uh, I you can both. say both. Arrested for shoplifting. NFL? NFL. Okay. Currently are defendants in lawsuits. Hmm. And NBA or NFL? Uh, what do you say? I feel like that's both. Can I say okay, both for you that? can say both. Eighty-four arrested for drunk driving in the last year. NFL. Okay, ready? The answer is neither. For it's, all of them? It's it's neither. Oh. It's the four hundred and thirty-five members of Congress. Think about that That's for a minute. That's insane. Those those are the people that we're electing. So we need to be more aware of what we're doing and how we're doing That's it. That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> right? Oh, my bunch. God. Well, listen, I'd like to thank you for tuning in today uh, for oh. the first episode of Footprints, season number two. My name is Mr. Davis. I'm an educator here at BHS, and it was my distinct pleasure to have had Ellie, Ellie LaPointe Point with me today. <laughs> Very And uh, don't forget to tune in to Channel 22 where this is posted. Also on SoundCloud. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.